Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Scorpion infestation, low test equals death, and triple debate. <laughs> Big Sig Tig all up in your grill. What do we got today? Let's check it out. Man is stung in the testicles by a scorpion at the Venetian Hotel as Las Vegas suffers mass infestation of venomous creatures. Look out. You're at the Venetian in Las Vegas. A California man is suing the Venetian after waking up to the searing pain of multiple stings from a scorpion in his boxer briefs while on vacation at the Las Vegas Hotel. The suits come amid a wave of of reports of scorpions invading properties across Sin City and its suburbs, including America's most lethal species, the Arizona Bark Scorpion. One homeowner, who claims to have killed over 22 scorpions on his property in recent months, told local news that he suspects the deadly southwestern species has snuck into the city aboard palm trees imported for tract homes and other desert landscaping products. Yikes, and there is an image of the culprit probably dead at that stage all right what else do we got here the arizona bark scorpion they warn is venomous and dangerous to young children the elderly people that are in poor health and those that suffer an allergic reaction to the sting probably similar to a bee sting uh, perhaps worse the las vegas area has many types of scorpion 23 to be exact according to that company global pest services of las vegas most of the scorpion species we see here are not something to worry about. Excellent. All photos taken by Michael F Farchi, the Southern California resident stung at the Venetian's Palazzo Tower, appear to show a small Arizona bark scorpion. The species and toxicity of the creature has not been made public, according to KABC. I woke up with a sharp pain in my private area. I was surprised, Farchi told reporters this March. I reached my hand to see what's happening over there under the cover, and I got another sharp pain. Another sharp pain. Yikes. All told, Farchi estimated that he was stung about three to four times by the scorpion as he attempted to remove the insect predator from his Reebok brand underwear. Gotta love the product placement there. Uh, in his pictures, the scorpion was a warm, bright yellow hue, similar in coloring to the Arizona bark scorpion, although he said his attacker was considerably smaller. According to PhD ecologist Jim Boone, the owner of Nevada-based Desert Wildlife Consultants, Arizona bark scorpions are about three inches long compared to the roughly one inch long scorpion that stung Farchi. Around Las Vegas, this species is more likely to be found on block walls and inside houses than out in the desert, Boone notes. As such, this is the species most people are likely to see. In Boone's experience, the ecologist added that bark scorpions are quite common in some parts of town. Additionally, the scorpion that attacked Farchi in his Venetian hotel room appears to have two dark eyes on the top of its head and what could be three pairs of lateral eyes all strong indicators that the now dead creature was a juvenile bark scorpion and there is an image of his reebok boxers with the little scorpion as you can see the size not very big but still quite painful i'm sure farchi's now suing the venetian with the help of las vegas area bed bug lawyer brian farag who noted that this was not the first incident wherein scorpions have been discovered invading guest rooms at the venetian why don't they just Fumigate the thing. Shut it down for three days. Takes about 72 hours to fumigate. Probably a lot uh, more time actually uh, for that. But, you know, get someone in there and fumigate. At least shut it down for a day and clean these rooms out. Nobody staying in Vegas needs to be exposed to deadly scorpions while they're sleeping, let alone on their private parts of their testicles. Obviously. Okay, so heads up at the Venetian. They uh, have a scorpion infestation. All right, what the heck is this? Transgender woman, so a biological male who suffered 100 orgasms a day while living as a man, says taking female hormones means she now only climaxes eight times a day. All right, Christine Decker, 40, was born Dale Decker and hit the headlines after developing a painful condition that left him having 100 orgasms a day. Decker developed persistent genital arousal syndrome, PGAS, after an accident. 
Since coming out as transgender in 2015, the mother of two has reduced her testosterone levels and seen the number of orgasms drop to just eight a day. The 40-year-old from Wisconsin remains married to devoted wife, April 36. Yeah, so like it's so weird to try and read this because they're referring to the past tense as a he and then they bring it to the present tense and he's a, a mother of two. So, and he's married to a wife. So wrap your head around this, people. It's pretty difficult. And if you don't, then you're a bigot. Transgender mother of two who hit the headlines while leaving as a, living as a man for enduring the nightmare of having 100 orgasms a day has revealed her condition has eased since she began her transition. Christine Decker, 40, from Two Rivers, Wisconsin, was born male and has been battling the ultra-rare condition, persistent genital arousal syndrome, PGAS, since 2012 after an accident triggered the illness. However, she revealed that since she began living as a woman two years ago and taking female hormones, she has uncontrollable orgasms just eight times a day. There's an image of the individual. Uh, and there's Dale, previous to Christine. All right. Christine remains married to her devoted wife, uh, clearly very devoted uh, to the family. I don't know how devoted she is to Dale or Christine. And a mother to sons, Christian, 15, and Tayton, 14. She says, I never felt like a boy. I just acted like one. Uh, life has totally changed for me in the past year, though. Uh, there are no words for how happy I am right now. Good for you. She continues, after I first came forward about PGAS, a lot of people assumed I died because I went into hiding. If you Google Dale Decker obituary, is one of the first suggestions that comes up. But I'm still here with the world at my fingertips. Christine's story began back in September 2012. Then living as Dale, she slipped her disc in her back, getting... See, now they're referring to it as... Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Getting up from her chair, rendering her unable to walk. Panicking, she called an ambulance and bizarrely experienced five orgasms on the way to a Holy Family Memorial Hospital. So literally just stood up, oh, got a back pain, and just started blowing their load everywhere. And it didn't stop. Up to a hundred times a day. I'll never forget the look in the paramedic's eyes. They almost look scared. Obviously, like, just dude orgasming before his eyes with no uh, arousal. They'd never seen anything like it, recalls Christine, who had two jobs as a merchandising director for Green Bay Packers Alumni Association and an administrative assistant for former NFL player, Super Bowl champion, and award-winning author, Dr. George Kuntz. I was sobbing. I had absolutely no idea what was happening. So just crying and ejaculating at the same time. <sighs> Okay, uh, doctors were baffled when the next day Christine had a mind-blowing 236 orgasms, the constant spasms leaving her pelvis in agony. I'd be on my knees with it. All these people would be staring at me and didn't understand what was going on, she said. It was really humiliating. The human race connects orgasms with pleasure, but it's possible to have way too much of a good thing. Yeah, moderation is key, right? I couldn't function. I was in complete agony. After being diagnosed with PGAS that same month, Christine was banded around various different doctors eventually she found a pelvic floor therapist and a chiropractor that offered to help by this point she was completely housebound barely able to run around after her then young sons uh yeah in 2014 christine became the first person to speak about life with pgas in a bid to get help and raise awareness to debilitating uh condition but rather than receiving sympathy, she was met with merciless trolling, I can only imagine. She explains, it was brutal. I had people I knew in real life going online saying horrendous things. I had people accuse me of making it up to claim disability. Uh, I worked all my life to provide for my family. Why would I put myself through this for money and attention? I was even mocked on the Conan O'Brien TV show here in the States. What he did was disgusting. He picked on someone with a rare medical condition and turned me into the butt of a joke. All right, so then to go on to explain what the syndrome is, which is clearly like uh, some sort of nerve damage or pinching of nerves just causing constant ejaculation. Christine's experience seriously damaged her faith in people. She continues, The sense of empathy around the world has greatly disappeared. What gives people the right to attack someone with a life-changing disorder? You wouldn't do it with any other illness. Why pee gas is different? Because it's funny. Because it's ejaculation. It's sexual. That's why it's, it's like uh, uh, a taboo. So like, you know, it's like, you know, fun to joke about those things it's not okay to hide behind fake profiles online and mock people who are suffering i agree forced into hiding christine said many people believed she died instead she was quietly pressing on after years of secretly battling feeling trapped in the whole body she came out as transgender on stage in front of hundreds of people as i was talking something hit me and i thought if i'm ever going if i if i'm ever doing this 
The time is now. So I just said it. It was incredible. I got a standing ovation. I'm a female, and I come all day. Good for you, buddy. And uh, I guess they transitioned. I don't know if you went ahead and did the uh, bottom uh, lop and chop, but it sounds like you're just on uh, hormones. So whatever. Good job. Peru officially classifies trans people as mentally ill, so I guess Dale or Christine Decker will not be traveling to Peru. The move has provoked outrage in a society where gender and LGBT rights have been under sustained assault in recent years. Yeah, so let's see. The Peruvian government has officially categorized trans and intersex people as mentally ill. The health ministry said the decree was the only way Peru's public health services could guarantee full coverage of medical attention for mental health. The move has prompted a fierce backlash in society where gender and LGBT rights have been under sustained assault in recent years where there are high levels of homophobic, transphobic, and gender violence. In one recent move, lawmakers banned references to gender equality from school textbooks that has had a devastating effect on classes intended to prevent domestic assault and femicides. Cesar Vasquez, the health minister, has failed to comment on the row. Instead, he has been defending President Dina Boulart, Boluarte, who is under investigation for her unexplained acquisition of expensive jewelry, <laughs> including a diamond-encrusted Cartier bracelet valued at 40,000 pounds. Look out, where did you get that? Last week, her brother, uh, Nicanor Bularte, was arrested for selling senior jobs in the government. Hmm. The president responded by dismantling an elite police anti-corruption unit and unsuccessfully attempting to block the publication of official statistics showing her rise in poverty. Percy Meta Tristan, a medical researcher at Lima's Scientific University of South, said that the decree may have been well-intentioned, but it revealed a lack of awareness of complex LGBT issues. Yeah, they're mentally ill. You believe you're something else. So, like, what if it transitions into something like, I believe I'm a cat or an elephant or a car. Apparently a guy in the UK married a car. So, like, if that's not mental illness, like, do you believe that's normal? If you believe that's normal, then you're mentally ill. And that's a fact. You can't affirm this stuff. It makes it worse. Anyway, Mr. Catillo's first prime minister, Guido Belindo, Belido, was known, among other things, for praising Fidel Castro for refusing to allow gay people, whom he described using derogatory term, to participate in the Cuban Revolution. Yeah, there you go. So they're totally just trying to dog these people, but really they're concerned about people's mental health and pushing it on to people who are vulnerable and uh, they'll believe in anything, like children believing in Santa Claus. Right? Absolutely. Low testosterone in men associated with an early death. New study, yikes. We covered yesterday that uh, obese people, or the other day, sorry, that obese people are weak. Their muscle tone basically causes them to die. You know, a weak muscle tone, intramuscular fat is just killing them. It's long been thought that testosterone shortens men's lives. Studies in neutered animals and Korean eunuchs seem to confirm this. However, a new study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine draws these findings into question. In this study, led by a team at the University of Western Australia, the researchers combined the results of 11 high-quality studies known as meta-analysis, investigating the effect of testosterone levels and lifespan. The studies followed men for at least five years and found that participants with lowest testosterone levels were more likely to die. Death in this study was from any cause, but digging deeper into the analysis reveals that this is mostly due to heart disease, still the leading cause of death in men globally. Why? Stress, eating terrible foods, and lack of cardiovascular exercise. What is it? in smoking? What is interesting is that the same process underlying heart disease might also contribute to erectile dysfunction. Cardiovascular, your heart's not pumping blood. Your blood can't reach your uh, sexual organ to achieve erection. The inability to get and keep an erection firm enough for sex. Erectile dysfunction often occurs much earlier than symptoms of heart disease and can act as an early warning sign of existing or future heart problems. Testosterone is known to have a large effect on erectile function, again, linking levels of this hormone to heart disease. So if you can't get it up, then you might have heart disease in the future and die young. So don't just be popping Viagra and Cialis. Go ahead and get some exercise. See if you can pop a natural one. Testosterone levels typically decline as men age, dropping by about 1% per year from the age of 30. Yikes. This is sometimes referred to as male menopause or andropause. The decrease over time is at least partially due to a slow waning of the ability of the testicles to produce testosterone and a reduction in the signals 
that tell them to. However, other factors can accelerate this decline, including chronic disease. Yeah, absolutely. So your body is basically telling you that women are becoming infertile. They're not producing eggs anymore. They're going through menopause. And uh, yeah, so you don't need to produ produce as much sperm as you did. So your testosterone levels will reduce. Chicken or egg, is, so is low testosterone causing disease or is it caused by? Interesting question. Uh, this is especially true for diseases that have long-term inflammation of which obesity is one. So they talked about obesity. You have low testosterone. It's going to be more difficult to develop those muscles that you need to stay alive. Low testosterone might be a marker of the disease to some extent is clearly also a contributing factor in the development of future disease and possible death. Heart attack and stroke increased with low testosterone. So heads up people, go to your doctor, tell them you want a battery of tests, blood tests, and you want to get your testosterone checked. Just verify what the levels are. And if they're low, you can get on TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy. Go into the doctor once or twice a month, they give you a little shot and you feel like you're 18, boom. Pledge dad in Mizu Hazen case pleads guilty. All right, what's a pledge dad? Sounds like university. One former member of a fraternity at Mizu Mizu pleaded guilty Friday in relation to a hazing incident in October 2021. Ryan Delante was one of several students in the Phi Gamma Delta fraternity known as Fiji that had been charged with hazing Danny Santuli on October 19th, 2021, which left him unable to walk, talk, or see. Uh, so Delante was uh, the pledge dad of Santuli, pled guilty to two separate counts of hazing and supplying alcohol to a minor. The night of the incident, uh, Pledge Dad reveal night, Santuli was instructed to drink a liter of vodka during the event. Good Lord. The lawsuit from Santuli's family said that Danny was given the liter of vodka. He was then selected by other members to drink beer through a tube, beer bong. Court documents go on to say that just before midnight, Santuli was sitting on the couch in extreme distress with a blood alcohol level of 0.468, six times the legal limit in Missouri. 30 minutes later, around 12.30 a.m., Santui slid partially off the couch and ended up with his face on the floor. He had no control over his arms and legs and stayed there until someone passing through the room put him back on the couch. Lasu states Santuli's skin was pale and his lips were blue, yet no one called 911. Yeah, so he probably suffered some, some oxygen deprivation there, causing some brain damage. He lost his sight from alcohol poisoning, and he is now paralyzed to a wheelchair. When they arrived, hospital staff went to the car only to find Danny was not breathing in cardiac arrest. So they, they drove him there. And uh, was like, come on out and get him. He's all jacked up. Medical bills of $2 million. Looks like they're going to get sued to the high heavens for this. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, we'll pray for uh, for both of those uh, kids and anyone involved in that, Delante and Santuli. Very unfortunate. Hazing is bad. It's bullying. Parents stunned as Alabama middle school principal is arrested for brutal 11-year-old cold case murder. Can you imagine? Keontae Harris, an assistant principal at McAdory Middle, was cuffed Wednesday. His arrest stemmed from a January 2013 murders of two men and a woman. All right, let's check it out. Alabama Middle School principal has been arrested and charged in the cold case deaths of three people that occurred more than a decade ago. Keontae Harris, since in principal, McAdory Middle School, surrendered to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office Wednesday on a fugitive of justice warrant. His arrest stemmed from the January 2013 murders of Cheryl Colquitt Thompson, Quinones King and Rodney Cottrell, a trio of Alabama residents found dead in a Clayton County, Georgia. The three were lured to a home, forced inside by gunpoint, tortured by Harris and three other accomplices, Clayton County Sheriff's Office said in a news release, adding that the three other suspects have all been arrested as well. They, they dropped the dime on this guy for sure. Identified as Kenneth Thompson, Kevin Harris, and Daryl Harris. They were all arrested across three states, the Sheriff's Office said. And here's a picture of the individual. Keontae and the other individuals there or perhaps they're the victims not sure four arrested all right on January 13th 2013 Union City Police Department was on general patrol in the area of Interstate I-85 Fulton County and they observed a 2010 Dodge Charger that appeared to be abandoned officers wrote of how they handled the 11 year old case yeah funny because Dodge Chargers are like the number one stolen vehicle in the U.S. upon further inspection inspection union city officers located three deceased bodies in the vehicle it was determined through the investigation that all three victims were tortured and murdered in clayton county and dumped in the fulton county the victims were lured into a residence at magnolia drive in jonesboro where they were forced into the residence at gunpoint later they were loaded into the backseat of a charger and taken to fulton county the bulletin goes on to state how chief kevin robert the head of clayton county police department and his team were able to crack the case before providing clayton county da with information necessary 
<clears throat> remains unclear if the suspects, several of whom have the same surname, are related. Yeah, there's the woman, uh, a couple of dudes, whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm pleased to announce today that through hard work and diligent investigations, 48 hours, all murder suspects were taken into custody across three states. Top cop went on to thank the department's law enforcement partners locally and abroad, credited with coming together to bring these suspects to justice. Each served three counts of malice murder for the triple homicide case in Union City, Georgia, the heaven. Yeah, so we'll uh, pray for the souls of the deceased, and... Uh, We'll pray that uh, these people can reform themselves. So two of the victims died of asphyxiation while the third was found strangled in the trunk of a car, which would be asphyxiation as well. The victims were believed to have been killed at a residence. Uh, yeah, the case actually helped me grow as a Crime Stoppers director because I was able to start off feeling what the family felt. Yeah, empathy. Yeah, all right, so we're still offering the reward for this case, so we are waiting for them to get back uh, to us to see if they had a tipster or if they had any information to come to solve the case. Yeah, great, so hopefully they did someone gets it now who the heck is this guy let's go ahead and just zoom in on this boom all right what do we got donald trump lost all right, all right let's just listen to the uh the president of the united states and see what he has to say donald trump lost two debates to me in 2020 the sense that he hadn't shown up for debate now he's acting like he wants to debate me again well make my day pal i'll even do it twice so let's pick the dates donald i hear you're free on wednesdays donald trump lost all right, all right. So they just like cut and uh, edited this thing to pieces. When I get up on stage, it'll be me and this grassroots team versus Donald Trump and his MAGA minions. It will be democracy versus authoritarianism. Yeah, Donald Trump, the Democrat, versus the authoritarian lawfare monster, Joe Biden. Revenge and retribution versus a vision for the future. Absolutely, it's, it's hilarious that this guy... Joe Biden is stating these things when it's actually him that he's describing, not the Donald. Unbelievable. Wow. So uh, cognitive dissonance going on there with the old fella. Trump challenges Biden to a third debate, and Joe immediately responds. Donald calls for a Fox News showdown and shootout between campaigns. So we have debates for June 27th, September 10th, and another one set here for October amazing and then the actual election taking place at uh, november 5th this is heating up all right please let this truth serve to represent that i hereby accept debating crooked joe biden on fox news the date will be wednesday october 2nd the host will be brett Baer and martha mccallum thank you djt trump wrote on truth social biden declined to meet more than the two times he proposed all right we'll see how it all plays out what do we got here People with HIV can be sperm and egg donors. Yikes. Watch out. Same-sex couples with non-transmissible HIV. So basically their viral load has been uh, reduced through medication. That They're saying it's okay. Well, like, you know, you don't have AIDS or HIV. Well, it's okay. Just don't eat your eggs. But if someone gets it, what? They have to sign a waiver? What's the deal? UK laws are changing to keep up with the science that shows it is safe, say experts. Highly effective medication means the risk of passing the virus can be eliminated. The move is part of a wider work to improve IVF access and ensure equal rights. I believe they've actually come out and said that uh, you can actually donate blood as a gay person now when it's pretty much been banned because gay men typically have an enormous body count, okay? Like gay men go to all kinds of orgy parties pig parties is one i heard about absolutely disgusting immoral behavior and that's why uh real doctors were like yeah we probably shouldn't let these people donate their blood because it's probably full of pathogens and they tested it and they're like oh good lord it's crawling all right so they have a sustained undetectable viral load so it's interesting. we'll keep you posted on that unbelievable mcdonald's to launch five dollar value meal but only for a month so maybe they seen our article there when uh Whack Arnold's was offering like a uh, $24 uh, nugget pack. No drink or fries. McDonald's restaurant chain has announced plans to launch a new $5 US value meal in America, but only for a limited time. So sorry, global, you cannot have it the rest of the world. The Golden Arch said it will offer $5 US value meal starting June 25th and it'll run for about a month before being discontinued. So what are they going to give you? McChicken and a four-piece chicken nuggets along with fries and a drink. You might get a McDouble in there, perhaps. All right, so they're not saying why they're not continuing. They're probably just going to test it to see if their uh, 
revenue increases over that month? Will people visit more? Because people are saying McDonald's is a huge ripoff these days. And McDonald's stocks has declined 7% over the last 12 months. Currently trades at $273.87 per share. Wow. All right, so go ahead and get your wacky D's on sale next month. China's restrictive approach to children's screen time and homework showing promising benefits. Who would have guessed reducing a child's screen time, like locked into video games more than likely, uh, they're not reading books on there, it's not a Kindle, uh, they're watching YouTube, cartoons, and they're playing video games. And they're literally sat on the couch with no exercise saying, I'm hungry. Why? Because your brain is like, you're not doing anything. Perhaps you need some food for energy. A series of measures taken by China to curb sedentary behavior among children in the country has been successful. A new study by British scientists has shown measures include restrictions on online gaming companies targeted at young demographic, limitations on the amount of homework teachers can assign, and a curtailment of lesson schedules of private tuition businesses. As a result, there have been a notable decline in both the overall duration of sedentary time and the length of various sedentary activities. Boom! So about 45 minutes a day. Children weren't physically active, particularly among students in urban areas. Not good. You should be active at least an hour a day. Researchers analyzed data from around 7,000 primary and secondary school students aged 9 to 18 across 14 cities. Data was gathered in 2021, 2020. Uh, yeah, boom. Less screen time equals healthy. All right, people. Thank you for joining SIGTIG. 20,000, sorry, 10,000 likes or subs. Mask comes off. You get to reveal who I am. Who am I? Sigma Tiger, signing out.